So I get it, you want to hit the ball as straight as this. In today's video, I'm going to show you the swing from a unique angle and share with you a fundamental part of the swing that you're already doing wrong. Additionally, I'll share a range of drills that can help you improve this skill immediately, including a $1 drill, which means this exercise can help everybody. Essentially, there are two main factors when it comes to hitting the ball straight, controlling the club face and controlling the swing path. Last week, we discussed club face control using the hack motion wrist sensor, and today we're gonna to discuss the swing path. This is gonna be the next ingredient in terms of helping you hit the ball as straight as you want to. And to help me do that today, I'm gonna to be showing you the swing from a fairly unique angle. I'm gonna be showing you from the aerial view above me looking down as I swing, and I'm gonna be drawing your attention to certain things in the swing that you may not even be familiar with, and you're probably not doing correctly. So we need to start with the basic premise that we play golf on a tilted angle. What does that mean? Well, we don't play with clubs that are vertical. If we did, we'd stand very close to the ball and we'd swing the club straight up and down like this. All of us play with clubs that are bent or on an angle, and that defines the game in a sense that you have to swing this club around you on some kind of arc. The grid that I've drawn on the ground here with the T-claw is a diagram to help you understand that. And I've done videos on the grid before. If you want to learn more about it and how to build this, I will uh, link the playlist to the grid videos in the description below. But essentially, what, I'm what I've drawn on the mat here is with this top line here is guidance for the club head, meaning it moves around me on the backswing, the downswing, and into the follow through. And the lines closest to my toes here are referencing my hand path, which moves in a similar fashion. And as we start to take a look at the swing from above, you'll begin to notice some things that, as I say, you maybe hadn't realized before. So as I start to swing back, you'll notice how the hands in the club start to trace this arc that you can see moving inwards and around me. And as I get to position two, the shaft is pretty much parallel with the ground and pointing down the target line. So as I swing back, my hands and club continue to move around me and a nice checkpoint at P3 where the lead arm's parallel to the ground, my arm's in, okay? It's not straight. So many golfers make the mistake of trying to hit straight by swinging straight. The golf swing is a circle on a tilted angle. It is not straight up, straight down, and straight through again. And I see that mistake made so often. It's quite an obvious one in, in the sense of, you can probably appreciate the concept that someone might have in terms of trying to hit the ball straight like that, but it's misplaced. We don't play golf on this upright lie angle, we play it on this tilted angle. So as I continue to swing back, you'll see how the lead arm is across me slightly at P3, matching the hand path grid line. And as I finish the back swing and start down, P5, you'll also notice how the lead arm is still in. It's still in and across me. It's not out here. That shows that I'm conforming to the geometry of the swing. I'm swinging in a, in a straight line, okay? I mean, it's not straight, it's an arc. But this is a straight swing that I'm demonstrating. So as I continue down to the ball, P5, P6, P7, notice how the shaft is leaning slightly forwards. Notice how my weight is already transferring to my lead side quite significantly. And as I move into the follow through, this is part of the swing that I really want you to see because from the angle that I'm speaking here and the conventional camera angle of down the line, you really don't often get to see how as soon as I've hit the ball, the club reaches the tangent point, which is this straight line here under my lead shoulder, and then the club is beginning to move around me to the left. In this example, as a right-handed golfer, it's moving around me as are my hands into the follow-through. So when I reach P9, when my right arm is parallel to the ground, you're going to see from the overhead view that once again, my right arm matches the hand path and the grid line here. I haven't swung straight down the target line. And if there was one mistake that I see more than anything in the follow through, it's the idea that you try to swing down the target line to try and hit as straight as you can. So hopefully the aerial view there just showed you how we should be conforming to this arc on both the back side and the front side of the swing. And that would be a straight swing, okay? That would be a relatively straight swing path, which is desirable. If you're struggling to hit the ball straight, chances are you're not doing that. And you'll probably fall into one of two categories. You can either swing 
too much to the right, which would be described in many parts as an in to out golf swing, from too much inside to outside, swinging to the right as a right-handed golfer. Or you make the opposite mistake, which would be swinging out to in, from outside li the line, across the ball, and too much inside on the follow-through. Those are the two common errors that I see on a daily basis. So how can we fix those? What drills can you do to stop doing that immediately? So the first point I'd like to make before I show you any of these drills is if you're serious about improving, you have to control the practice environment when you go to the driving range or when you practice and hit balls. Simply going to the range and whacking a bucket of balls or two or three buckets of balls down the driving range is not, um, pra not practicing. I'm sorry to break that news to you. And it's probably why you're not seeing much improvement because you're ingraining an old pattern, a poor pattern, but simply getting a little bit better at the driving range, timing it, and then your performance dips again on the golf course and you wonder why. I'm not suggesting for a second you have to do anything as elaborate as this, and I'm gonna come on to some much simpler drills very shortly, but you need to stop making excuses and start making some progress, and in order to do that, you must control the practice environment. That is a non-negotiable. So here I've set up one of my favorite training aids, the Tour Striker Plane Station. This is a pretty simple concept like most good training aids. It's a block of wood that has holes drilled into it at different angles and it allows me to set up a station like this which is a popular practice station for my students at Golf Tech to be able to help them control the swing path and ultimately train in a way that genuinely improves their swing. The way I've set it up here is I've got a noodle on the back side here stopping me from taking the club too far on the inside. If I was to do that I'd hit it. Equally it stops me on the downswing getting too much on the inside or getting the club too far behind me. And then on the follow through it stops me swinging too far to the right. So this drill, I'd set this up for the golfer who swings too much in too out. That would be someone who suffers with hooking the ball, pushing the ball and those sort of patterns. And then golfers can go ahead and practice making swings, avoiding these obstacles and gaining feedback as to how well they're doing it. And once they progress beyond just slow rehearsals and practice swings, you can actually hit this. Pretty straight shot, miss the noodles, pretty straight swing. So you can see how very quickly this could help a golfer to recognize their deficiency, get feedback on it, and go ahead and, and really start to make progress very, very quickly. And for you slices out there, I've just switched these around. So now I've got the noodle on the backside stopping me from taking the club too far outside, stopping me from swinging too far on the outside on the downswing, and stopping me from swinging across the ball too far on the follow through. So I'll go ahead and hit one of those. One of the nice things about this training aid, it has different angles that you can set your stick to because as you change clubs, you're gonna require a slightly different setting here. So I can go and stand back here and hit driver on a flatter shaft setting, and I could go closer to the ball and hit my wedges and uh, adjust the noodles accordingly. But here goes. Again, if you're swinging pretty straight, missing these noodles should be pretty straightforward. That was pretty solid. Nice straight one down the middle again. So you can see that you could, fit, you could find a way to create this practice environment. You could set it up if you really wanted to. Again, try not to make excuses. If you want to make progress, you're going to have to control the practice environment. But I do understand that investing in two tour striker training aid, alignment sticks, noodles, and carrying all of that to the driving range with you and setting it up might not be something you want to do. I understand it's the being conspicuous, the person standing on the driving range, setting up a comprehensive station like that. I would tell you I would encourage you to do it, overcome your nerves and, and watch your golf improve. But if you prefer a slightly simpler, less conspicuous option and a, and a lot cheaper as well, my one dollar drill for you is to go and get yourself a pull, pull noodle or two. These things are so useful. And then I've cut this one down to about a foot or 18 inches and I can position this on the ground in a way that helps me get feedback on my swing path. Okay, in this instance, I've just chosen to take one noodle and place it just outside the ball. The other great thing about these is because they're, because of the way they're made, you can you know, bend them and shape them a little bit. So I've even, I even tend to just curve them slightly to give the golfer that visual reference for the fact that the swing path isn't a straight line, as we've been saying all day. This is not a straight line, this has an arc to it. Now if we set this up on the ground, we leave about half an inch or an inch of gap between the edge of the golf club and the noodle, I can go ahead and practice 
And in, in this instance, I would set it up like this if I was trying to help a golfer to swing less out to in. So if I wanted someone to remove that over the top motion in their swing, I would place this down during a lesson and, and we'd hit balls like this. And I often say to people, even when you're successful at this drill and you start missing the noodle regularly, don't be scared to leave it down during your practice session. If you're doing a good job, you're not gonna hit it. It doesn't even matter that it's there. So many people are too quick to take it away and then they revert to their old problem. So noodle on the ground, $1 investment to make your golf game a huge, huge amount better. And then finally, a more advanced version of this drill. To add a second noodle, we've got one outside the ball, one inside the ball now, stopping me from coming too much from the inside or too much from the outside. This might just double the price of this drill to $2, but I would suggest the benefit is well worth the investment. So remember guys, control the practice environment, make progress, not excuses. If you're finding that you're conforming to this swing path drill and not hitting the noodles, but your ball flight is still too far offline, chances are you've got a club face control problem. You need to go and check out this video next, which is my video on club face control, twisting the wrist using the hack motion wrist sensor. I think you'll really enjoy it. But before you go, please hit that like button, click subscribe and leave a comment for me down in the box below. See you next week.